are going to have to miss the Jacksonville game because of the Martin's positive test? Well, uh, Jacob Martin, for one, because he's on uh, – did I lose you guys? Nope, we're here. All right. I lost your image, though, somehow. Hang on one second, see if I can get your image back. Okay, well, you know what? I guess we can go on without the image as long as you can hear me. We can hear you. Okay, good. So, you know, Jacob Martin, he is uh, on COVID IR, and so he's not playing this weekend. And after uh, the NFL did their contact tracing, uh, they found that Whitney Merciless and Dylan Cole had been in close contact with Jacob and um, thought that they were at risk and potentially potentially at risk for maybe uh, if not having it, if having it, passing it on to the, to the other team members. So the protocol says that they need to uh, isolate for five days. So they have to isolate for five days, which means that they're not eligible uh, for the Jacksonville game. So those are the three guys that, that we will miss. Um, and hopefully there will no, be no other positives that will impact anybody else on the team. But uh, we might not know that until tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, and so we'll see what tomorrow brings. Romeo, what do you do about your linebackers when you miss, especially Whitney as a starter and Jacobs available guy off the bench? What do you, how do you adjust losing three linebackers? Well, you know what? We have, uh, we have some defensive linemen. We have some practice squad linebackers. And one of the good things about uh, the NFL this year is they allowed more guys on the practice squad and then they allow you to move up a guy from the practice squad to play in a game, um, and then he can go back down to the practice squad after the game. So in the case of, let's say, trying to replace Whitney and Dylan, all right, um, because they're going to miss this game, we can bring people up, two people up, to replace those guys, and then they can go back down when Whitney and, and Dylan come back. And, and so we're hoping that after five days they'll be back and then they'll be back into their normal routine. Mark Berman. Romeo, how difficult is this now with missing three key guys in your defense that are out and you having to bring in other people to get ready quickly on defense for Jacksonville? Well, it's never easy when you, when you lose, you know, your top guys. And these are some top guys on defense for us. Um, but one of the things I always talk to the players about uh, in their roles and how important their roles are, that they have to be ready to step up uh, and play when called on. And I always tell them that if you're in the game when the ball is snapped, you are a starter and you're expected to react and respond as a starter. So hopefully they have been in their playbooks. They've been taking advantage of the reps that they get on the practice field or on the show team. And when they get an opportunity to go into the game, um, it can be a positive outcome for them and for us. Romeo, y'all have done obviously a really good job during this whole sequence of events in terms of the pandemic and, and keeping everybody healthy. What are your concerns going forward with how y'all are doing things? Or, or, do you not, or do you not have any concerns given what's happened? Well, you know, I thought, thought our guys have done a really good job since the start of this, uh, this pandemic. Um, and then the protocols that have been put in place by the league, you know. And so now what I notice is that as the medical experts have said, as the weather gets colder, all right, then there's going to be more cases. And that seems to be the case um, in the NFL, you know, because there are several other teams that are going through the same thing that we're going through now um, this week. So I'm, I'm concerned about going forward. Uh, what happens going forward, particularly if, let's say, a, a large number on your team uh, have come in close contact with somebody or you have more than one positive case, then then what's going to happen? Um, so that's an unknown, and we will adjust and we will adapt as we need to uh, and have to uh, 
um, down the road if that if that occurs. Aaron Wilson. Hey, Romeo. What's your message to the guys today as you meet with them virtually? Uh, obviously, anytime someone you know, has a health problem, especially something serious like COVID, can be upsetting, can be a lot of things. What do, kind of, do you tell the guys as you try to work virtually, get your work in, and do you expect to have a practice tomorrow? If all? Well, I hope to have a practice tomorrow. Uh, you know, that will somewhat depend on the league um, and, and maybe – if there are other positive tests later on today, if there are other positive tests later on today, then probably will not practice tomorrow. But if everybody is negative, um, kind of like it looks like it is right now, then I think that they might let us back into the building uh, to get practice in so that, you know, so that we can feel better about playing on Sunday. Uh, but my message to the players were, you know, uh, it's an unfortunate thing that that's happened. Um, that we have to lose these players for this game, but they're part of our family and uh, we're going to support them. Uh, and then the other guys have to be ready to step up. Uh, whoever we determine those other guys are, they have to be ready to step up and perform at a good level for us. Romeo, along those lines, John Grenard, who has played a little bit of football for you guys, I think about 11 defensive snaps. Uh, how ready do you feel like John is uh, for some playing time? He's been active for you. He's played mostly special teams. Do you feel like John is is ready to play uh, with these guys now? Well, you know what? I think John feels like he's ready to play. Only time will tell. You know, when we put him out there uh, and how he plays, we'll find out if he's ready or not. Because we're probably going to have to put him out there. Who's next? Aaron Reese. I got to know if I was, no, I was waiting to get called on or what. Hey, Romeo, uh, you guys obviously are, you had a lot of time uh, working virtually during the off season and whatnot, but how challenging is it to you as a coach to not have this day to practice in terms of just installing your game plan? How much work were you able to actually get done in that regard today, just virtually? Well, I think meeting wise, uh, you can get the same thing done in your meetings that you would do if, if you were, meeting with them in person, okay, or in our bubble. Um, but the difference is the practice. You know, today is a, is a big practice day for us, and so we miss a big practice day. Um, and so that that's the difference because, you know, we met with them this morning, but they're on their own basically this afternoon, and so they're not practicing. Uh, and then when you talk about tomorrow, we practice tomorrow, we'll have to add a couple things to the schedule uh, try to get some of the stuff that we missed today, but without making, without going overboard on the practice and the time that we're on the field, uh, because we play a game on Sunday. Adam Wexler. Uh, Romeo, did you guys finalize the signing on quarterback Josh McCown? And, and if you added him, why did y'all decide to do that? Well, uh, we've added him. Um, and he's an excellent third option for us. Uh, we didn't have a quarterback on a practice squad. And basically, when you look at the situations that are, that are going on around the league and, and basically on this team, you know, when you lose a player and, and knock wood, and thank goodness it hasn't been a quarterback, but just in case, if we lose a quarterback uh, to the virus, now then we have a proven, experienced guy, you know, uh, in the on deck circle or in the bullpen so that we can pull from that guy. And he has a tremendous amount of experience. Um, he's seen a lot, done a lot. And, you know, he's, his home is not far from here. And so it, it'll be good for him to be back in the area. And I think that his experience in that quarterback room uh, will be uh, valuable as well. You want? Should, am I? Can I go? Um, hey, Ro Romeo, I, I'm just curious. How concerned are you personally with what's going on? I mean, we've got cases going up, going up around the country, uh, in the city, and obviously your situation on the team. How concerned are you personally with all of this? Now, when when you talk about me personally, are you talking about my coaching? Are you talking about my health? 
Your 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 health, yeah. About the with the COVID, yeah, absolutely. Your your health, oh, yes, sir. Well, I know that I'm in the at risk category in one of the higher categories uh, because of my race, my color, my obesity, and all of that good stuff. But so far, not wood. Okay, I've been wearing my mask. I've been washing my hands. I've been trying to stay a distance away from the players. Uh, and not up in their face and all of those kind of things. So, so far, it's been working well, uh, you know, uh, but who knows what's going to happen down the road. Uh, I'm concerned, but not enough to make me change what I'm doing. Um, I enjoy coaching. I love being around the players. And so I will do it. And then if I get COVID, then I'll have to deal with COVID at that time. John? Romeo, since you mentioned that, you guys had a succession plan for you to replace Bill back before training camp. If you did test positive, who takes your place? Oh, that's a good question. I think we have several guys on the staff who are capable with NFL experience who will be able to step in. I, I have not sat down with Jack and talked to Jack about who might replace me, but I'm sure that there's a su succession uh, plan on the desk. And so we've got several guys with NFL experience uh, who've been around and who would be experienced enough to step in and, and do the job uh, through the end of the season. Can I ask you one more thing, please? You've played four linemen quite a bit. Uh, do you envision continuing with that plan or would you have to play four linemen more, especially if you thought they, a couple of them could rush the passer? Well, if they can rush the passer, yes, we'd play them more. Um, I think um, how many linemen we play might depend on how many linebackers we have available to us and how the linebackers perform. You know, if the four linemen perform better than the linebackers, then you put the linemen in there and let them play. But if the linebackers bring more to the table than, say, a lineman that you put in there, then you need the line, linebacker in the game. So, you know, but we have flexibility in, in what we do with, with our defense and what we can do. So a lot of it depends on, you know, the scheme and how guys fit into the scheme and then how they produce within the scheme. We'll take three more. Berman? Romeo, has, has the league told you or have you talked with them internally about how your game on Sunday could be impacted by this in terms of having to move it or not play it? What, what, is, what has been said to you about all the potential there? Well, I think that the league wants to play the game if possible, okay? And so they will wait until tomorrow, at least, I believe, um, before making a decision. Um, and at the latest, it'll be Saturday because that's when we travel. And if they decide that uh, we can't travel, then they have to make that announcement, you know, uh, by Saturday. And so at that point, I'm not sure what they would do. Our bye week has passed, and there might not be space to reschedule. So uh, it's kind of up in the air. Sarah? Romeo, what, what was the process like from when you get the call that you have a positive test to just the logistics of informing the team and getting everything set up for today? Oh, well, it's, it's a little difficult. Um, because you don't like the news that you got to start with, okay? But then right away your mind starts thinking, well, if he can't play, then what do I need to do? Um, and then, boom, those scenarios go through your head. And then when you get to the point, okay, well, it's time to talk to the team. Well, do I want to put this negative information on them to start with, or do I want to wait and be positive with them and then – give them the negative information later. Uh, but coaches have to make adjustments and they need this extra time to get guys ready because some guys will have to move and change positions and um, they're going to have to re-educate themselves about the game plan. And so um, we thought it's better to announce it right away so that guys knew about it uh, and then the coaches can make their adjustments without trying to beat around the bush. And so that's why we announced it this morning at, uh, at the squad meeting. And uh, it was out there. And so everybody understands it. 
they have to deal with it. And so we're going to go forward. We talked about going forward and preparing to go to Jacksonville and play a winning effort there and win the game. That's one for Aaron. Hey, Romeo. Wanted to ask you about how Max Sharping and Jacob are feeling. Uh, your understanding of in terms of symptoms, how those guys are both doing. And with Max, is it a situation where you think he could be back at some point uh, soon? Thank you. Well, yes, Max is feeling well. I mean, he has no major symptoms or anything like that. Um, Jacob, you know, he was just discovered, and he has no major symptoms. Um, Max is into his 10-day isolation um, that's mandatory. All right, Jacob will start his, and and I think that they both will be okay and will be able to be back with us. Um, the only thing that changes that is if their symptoms get worse for whatever reason. But but uh, a lot of times these guys, and, and I don't know what it is, their age, because they're athletes and they work out regularly, their systems can handle things a little bit better. Uh, they seem to be able to come back from a positive test, you know. So uh, hopefully these guys will be back, and I'm planning on them being back. And But with the... We can't do anything about them getting back until after they go through uh, the protocol. Thanks for your time, Coach. We appreciate it. Okay, guys.